Warriors, they'll send out Kelly Barnhill inside the circle and coming off, picking up her 1,000th career strikeout on Wednesday. An incredible feat, Francesca. I know Barnhill was just who we see her in the circle collecting, you know, a bunch of strikeouts. But again, being able to be different, mix it up, not always having to go with her rise ball is really why she was able to get that feat. And just a huge moment for the senior, something that you really expected when she came into play with Orange and Blue. So Kelly Barnhill comes in after picking up what was her 16th winning decision on Wednesday. Right now enters with a 1-2-9 ERA, and they've needed her to anchor this pitching staff. And she certainly has done just that with big performance after big performance. And we'll take on a Mercer Bears lineup. They come in at 13-18. and 18. They have not started conference play yet in the Southern Conference, but it's a Mercer lineup that comes in first in runs scored, first in hits in the SoCon. So certainly some hitters that can get this team on the board and all starting out with Michaela Rood along with Brianna Rodriguez and Daniel Castleberry that will be the first three due up for Mercer in this first inning well if you're a Bears team coming into this environment this stadium and have to face Kelly Barnhill there's a lot on this Mercer plate today I mean, they were probably a little bit starstruck when they came in, being able to play in this huge stadium, have a huge video, uh, video scoreboard look at them. But, you know, that's not what they're going to be staring at. They have to be staring down at the pitcher just like they play every single game and make sure that they don't, you know, feel that overwhelming feeling in order to be successful. So for the Gators, they enter 25-6. and six. As Michaela Rood will lead off, 269 hitter, no homers and nine runs driven in. Against Kelly Barnhill, one of two Gators north of a thousand career strikeouts. As we get set to get underway. First pitch is ball one, and we are underway here at 4.03 local time. 78 degrees, not a ton of wind. Here this afternoon, but what you like to see is the sun is shining on the field, no clouds overhead. And these are one of those games, Francesca, where you have the shadows come to play as you hit twilight hours and certainly affect the hitters as this one rolls along. Right now, the shadow is still behind home plate. Especially when you have a pitcher that has the movement like Barnhill, you're already struggling having to pick that speed up. But then once you put the shadows into play, it's harder to try to get your visuals on it. Count one and two on Michaela Rood. It's been the primary leadoff hitter for the Mercer Bears this year, getting the start in right field. Mercer comes in hitting 288 as a collective group. Swing and a miss. First K for Kelly. Gets us underway here on the first. Such a great start for Kelly when you're able to see that rise ball jump. You can take a look at the swing that Rude puts on it. It is super late because it looks like she's going to get on top of it, but that last late minute sharp break is how Barnhill has all those strikeouts. Now that brings in Brianna Rodriguez, only hitting 111 this year. Right now for Barnhill has 1,007 in terms of career strikeouts. It's 109 away from Stacy Nelson, who has 1,116 in her career. She played here from 2006 to 2009, and we will continue to have that countdown as the year goes along for Barnhill, trying to reach that top spot. Coming off that 12 strikeout performance on Wednesday, went the complete game seven innings, only allowed three hits and no runs in that 2 nothing shutout win over the Golden Gophers. Bit of a different lineup today for the Gators, so a different defensive setup. Cheyenne Lindsay seeing the start in left field. Caraway slides to center field, and Jamie Hoover seeing the start at third base. Those are some of the notable changes. And I feel like that's just because, you know, Coach Tim Walton is trying to, again, figure out what this recipe is going to be in order for these Gators to get their offense going. It's something we I feel like we've been talking about for the last month. What are they going to do to try to develop some hits here? Rodriguez takes strike three. Back-to-back K's -back for Kelly. And now there's two gone. Right now, vintage Kelly Barnhill, two batters in. Well, you can see Rodriguez having the two strikes was sitting rise ball. She's assuming that Kelly's going to go with her bread and butter pitch, the rise ball, but instead she goes with the screw and gets caught looking.
Here's Danielle Castleberry, first in the SoCon in hits, second in on-base percentage, also second in batting average. She's 14 of her last 22, that's 636 at the plate. She's hit safely in nine of her last 10 games. Kelly trying to strike out the side here in the first inning. Kelly has struck out the side 16 times this year, did it once against Minnesota. Came in the seventh inning. Last year, K the side 33 separate times. Looking to do it to get us underway here in the first. Castleberry down, one, two. Flails and misses, and Kelly strikes out the side for the 17th time this year as the Mercer Bears go down to one, two, three. It's the Bears nothing, and the Gators coming up when we come back. As we head to the bottom of the first inning, a sunny day here in Gainesville between the Gators and the Mercer Bears. Still no score as Kelly strikes out the side in the top of the first inning. For the Gators, a little bit of a different starting nine today. And that part of Coach Walton trying to see what works right now. And for the first time this year, Jade Carraway will lead it off. We've seen her in the lower third of the order. Against Bailey Pattison. This is grounded to shortstop. Couple hops for Kenley Harvey across the diamond for the first out. So Francesca, what did you what do you make of the lineup reshuffling for the Gators here today? Yeah, you know, I, I like the move. I like how it, we kind of talked about this before the broadcast. It's kind of an old school lineup, having speed going one, two, and in the nine hole as well to be the table setters for your hitters that are consistently hitting in or consistently hitting. When you have someone like Amanda Lorenz and Kendall Lindemann, they've normally been the one-two, but they've been getting on base. No one's able to hit them in. So Jade Carraway, she's someone who I feel like who can, who can do well at the top of the lineup. And now Hannah Adams with that lineup reshuffling moves to the second part of the order. We've seen her primarily at the three spot this year behind what has been the normal Lorenz Lindemann one-two in Coach Walton's lineup. Adams flares this towards left field. Easy grab for Shayla Warren, and there's two up and two down. So now that brings in Amanda Lorenz. So, so far, no success with one and two in the order. Brings in Lorenz, who's hitting 420 this year. Team best eight homers and 24 driven in. How about this for Lorenz? She's reached safely in 28 of 31 games this year, and on deck is Lindemann, who's reached in 30 straight. Just shows what those two have been able to do back-to-back -back in this order. Well, they feed so well off of each other, not just because they, they're such clutch hitters, they're able to step up when they need a hit, but, but they know the zone very well, so they're able to take their walks. Pitchers are afraid to them, so they try to be choosy against them. Time off speed from Bailey Pattison. It's one and two. Pattison, the freshman from nearby Ponte Vedra Beach, Florida. One of two freshmen that has seen the bulk of the innings this year for Mercer. You know, in Pattison, she doesn't really have just one go-to pitch. She really throws it all, and that's What's going to probably help her today is being able to mix it so that the Gators don't focus on one side of the plate or one zone. That one just missing outside. So Lorenz works it full three and two with Lindemann looming on deck. This is the kind of at bat the Florida needed after you had Caraway swinging at the first pitch out and Adams swinging at the first pitch out, trying to get some depth early on in this first inning. And that's ball four. So the Gators walks leader all time. Lorenz draws a free pass here with two outs. And that brings in Kendall Lindemann, who has homered in four of the last six games, all against top 25 teams. And she's homered 
in the first inning in the last two games, in game three against LSU, and in the first inning against her old team in Minnesota on Wednesday. And you said it in the open, Francesca, this is what I guess those around the country have become accustomed to with Lindemann. We're finally starting to see that power more consistently from her. She was stuck at two homers for a bit until that Tennessee series. This is in the dirt. Lorenz stays put. Well, when she transferred over, you know, she's the Big Ten home run leader. She hit 20 home runs. So you're expecting home run after home run. But, you know, due to her injury in the fall, she comes in with a new team. It took her a while to kind of get started, but she's here now. She's hot. She's driven in the last eight Gator runs, has Kendall Lindemann. 15 of her last 43, that's 349. Hits in 25 of last 30 games played. Powers this towards center field, but this will stay in the ballpark. Rally Jones, and that ends the inning. So the Gators have a two-out walk from Amanda Lorenz, but nothing more. And through one, we have no score. Young fans having some fun at the ballpark here on this Saturday afternoon. Having trouble keeping their balance out there in left field, but what a better way to spend a, a Saturday afternoon than at the ballpark. Beautiful day. It really is the perfect softball weather today. Like Before it gets really, really hot here in Gainesville, it was about 78 degrees at first pitch, so. It didn't even feel like 78, it was like 74. I'm gonna say that. Here's Allie Jones to lead it off. We saw Kelly, fairly dominant in inning number one, struck out the side for the 17th time this year. In her senior season, final year in a Gator uniform. Francesca, when Kelly's at her best, what do we see from her and what she's able to deliver to home plate? I think the biggest thing is that she's able to mix her pitches. Everyone knows that Kelly's going to come in with that rise ball, the three different planes. You know, it comes in slower, so she likes to use that as like a changeup almost. And then she has her screwball that she's able to locate 70 miles per hour, her two seam fastball on the other side of the plate, 70 miles per hour. So when she's able to keep batters guessing and get them on their hands, get them chasing at that, that third level rise ball, that is when she's at her best. But she gets into trouble a lot of the times when the hitters can catch up with that, let's say, that first level level or that two-level rise ball. Count evens at two and two. Ali Jones has reached in 15 straight games. She's second in the SoCon in hits. Bears have one and two in this lineup in terms of players who have been able to manufacture the most hits in the conference. As this has popped up towards short left, Reynoso out to make the grab. There's one away. So four up and four down to begin the game. Brings in now Kenley Harvey. So the Gators electing to go with Barnhill today. We'll see who the Gators throw tomorrow. Of course, a, a plethora of options, but that a big storyline coming to the year as well as who's going to step up in the rotation behind Kelly. We saw that an issue against LSU in that three-game series. Kelly threw a couple of gems in games one and game three, and Florida was run-rolled in game two, in which Natalie Lugo got the start. And that really has been the biggest question mark is who can back Kelly up? Who can help, you know, offset offset her? They do have so many options in the pen, but a lot of young options that still need some growth and still need some time. Kenley Harvey down in the count, one and two. They appeal down to first. They say Harvey did not go around. 
And that's that rise ball on that third level, that one that looks pretty out of the zone, but it is hard to lay off of. Harvey just able to keep her barrel back, not get the strike. This looks so good coming out of the hand. Swing and a miss, and Kenley Harvey strikes out. Fourth K for Kelly, now two gone here in the second. And that is Barnhill right there. She throws that high rise ball, but then just hums this screwball right in on your hands. You see Harvey tries really hard to get that barrel out of there, but it's just too close on her and not quick enough. Here's Megan Lane here with two outs. Kelly now trying to retire the side for a second straight inning. Kelly is the NCAA's active leader in shutouts with 36 coming in, leads the nation in strikeouts, second in shutouts, third in wins. Right now working quickly and efficiently as Megan Lane down 0-2. Clips the outer black, and for Kelly Barnhill, now five strikeouts through six batters faced. She is in cruise control mid two. We have no score. On to the home second inning here in Gainesville. Still no score. Kelly Barnhill has been dominant to this point. Has struck out five of the first six batters to the plate. Now for the Gators trying to get the offense going. They had one base runner in that first inning with a two out Lorenz walk. Now here's Jordan Roberts, followed by Daniel Romanello and Sofia Reynoso. How about the Gators in their start to conference play, losing two of three to Tennessee and two of three at LSU. And brings back to mind that 2014 season in which the Gators had finished third in the SEC. They were 15 and nine in the league, but they lost two of three to Alabama. They were swept against Tennessee, lost two of three to Missouri. So it's not easy to be perfect in this conference. And I think we see a lot of, I guess, overreaction is the word when, when the Gators fell against two top 10 teams in their first two SEC series. Well, you know, we kind of talked about it even before the game is, you know, what what's going on with them? And, and really, they're just facing some tough competition. It's hard to be the number one team every single time. You know, if Florida was to win the SEC again, it would be the first time there's a team to ever win five in a row. It's yeah. never been done. So when we don't see them be th at the excellent level as we're used to, it kind of throws some question marks out there. But they're almost in a rebuilding year. We really have to remember that. You know, they don't have Alicia Ocasio anymore. They don't have Nicole DeWitt, who they lost. They lost a lot of key players last year who were the leaders of this team, who brought in a lot of offense. You know, Kaylee Kavistad, Janelle Wheaton. So this is a team who needs to find their identity. Roberts pounces deep towards left field. Forget about it. Off the roof of the bullpen and left. Jordan Roberts, her fourth home run of the year, and the Gators have a 1-0 lead. That was smoked. That was one of those home runs that got out of this park in a hurry, hit just on a dead line drive. Gets this pitch on the inner half, elevated, and just able to turn on it, and she knows it's out of the park immediately. She's into her home run try. You know, and Jordan Roberts is someone that has to turn up her power in order for that Gator offense to get going. You know, she's only had, I think, five, four, six hits in the last 10 games. So she's someone that, that really needs to start seeing the ball a little bit well and trying to come up big when she has runners in scoring position. So the Gators a one nothing lead, and that was a big part of the conversation around this offense for Coach Walton. He said, plain and simple, I need more production out of the middle of the order, and he put Jordan Roberts in that group. Here's Romanello, goes opposite field towards left, back towards the warning track. Warren has a beat on it to make the grab. Almost a bid to go back to back. There's one away. And that's a good grab from the left fielder Warren out there. That is a hard catch to make off of a lefty spin, especially when it's tailing away from you. So now that brings in Sofia Reynoso for the Gators. That was their 29th home run as a team. Came in near the lower third in the SEC in terms of home runs. This hit sharply foul.
Reynoso lays one down in front of home plate. The throw to first. And not covering in time was Castleberry. So Reynoso operates herself an infield bunt hit with one out. Just another thing that we need to start seeing more from Florida, Reynoso. We know she has that sneaky bunt power, able to read the defense. Now this is placed perfectly, able to hop over it, and the second baseman, Castleberry, unable to get there quick enough. Second sacrifice of the year for Sofia Reynoso. Rather, bunt single for Reynoso. Had one sacrifice coming in, so has that ability to lay down the bunt in the lower third of the order. So for the Gators, their second hit, both coming in this inning. Now here's Jamie Hoover seeing the start at third base today. And for the Gators, they've been trying to get Jamie Hoover going. She's two of her last 20. That's an even 100. Hitless in eight of her last 10 games. You know, it's crazy to me when you see the, those numbers for Hoover, because I feel like every time she gets in the batter's box, something is going to happen. She is going to create something. She sees a lot of pitches deep. She's able to fight. So she does get out a lot, but sometimes those outs can be productive, able to take it counts very deep. She's popped up, and we'll get out of play. Hoover had a year last year, sophomore season, hit 311. Really big postseason, a regional round here in Gainesville, in which she had seven runs driven in in the regional round. Hey, that's when you want to be your best, right? Yeah. <laughs> there you take a look at the numbers for Hoover this year, still batting over 300. And also for the Gators entering this game, they're 22 and two in scoring first, and. Big reason why is you give insurance for Kelly Barnhill to throw up some zeros. Right now is a one-run lead. Hoover hits this deep down the left field line with some carry towards the wall. If it's fair, it's gone. And it is a foul ball for Jamie Hoover. Man, that looked really close down the left field line. That was super close. I don't know. <laughs> That looked fair to me inside the foul pole down the left field line. Let's take another look. Yeah, it yeah, looked like it was tailing foul. It's hard to tell sometimes. <laughs> Good thing the umpires always know best, right? Hoover goes towards right field. This has some carry as well towards the base of the wall, and Hoover will have extra bases. Reynoso around third, she will trot home, and into third with a run scoring triple is Jamie Hoover. And the Gators have a two nothing lead. Now that is just beautiful hitting right there from Hoover. You know, she's fighting all of those inside pitches out. She just misses a home run on the pitch before that. But now this time you have Pattison going away from Hoover and she's able to stay on it. And the misstep from the right fielder Rude allows this ball to travel deeper into the park. Great hitting, great piece of hitting by Hoover. Here's Cheyenne Lindsay, yanks this right to second base to Castleberry, throws on to first, but that brings in a run as Jamie Hoover scores, so Lindsay puts it into play, and the Gators extend their lead to three runs. Now Lindsay there just has to do her job and pull something when you have a when you have a runner at third base. And that ball almost got through the second baseman Castleberry because she was starting to cheat towards second base, but able to recover that quickly. That has been the big issue for the Gators has been situational hitting. As a team, they're hitting 272 coming into this game and over the last 10, south of 200 with runners in scoring position. So for this Gator offense, so far so good. Seen a lot of good swings. Jordan Roberts has homered in this inning. A powerful triple from Jamie Hoover to opposite field. Right now three runs here in this second. And the thing it is that like hitting is so contagious that, that you're hoping for a weekend series like this for Florida that you know you start having batters feeling good in at bats. You start having batters feel good in certain counts to then 
you build that confidence up to, so then it can continue to roll over in SEC play. Caraway lifts this towards third base, and not enough room for Amanda Schwartz up against the netting. Now they'll say Caraway was out of the box, fading out of the box on the left side. So Caraway is ruled out for the final out of the inning. But the Gators get three runs on a couple of powerful swings, two extra base hits in the inning, as Roberts homers to lead off the second inning, then a run scoring triple from Jamie Hoover. Tax on another one, followed by an RBI ground out from Lindsay. Gators lead by three. Gators getting three runs in the bottom of the second inning. Three runs on two extra base hits in that inning. Also an RBI ground out from Cheyenne Lindsay as Kelly Barnhill has been in command through two innings. And struck out five of the first six to the plate. And we've seen vintage Kelly here on this Saturday afternoon. Taking on Amanda Schwartz, 7, 8, and 9 in the Mercer order. And this will hit Schwartz on a hop, so Schwartz will be Mercer's first base runner, and it comes here in this third. Kind of saw the reaction from Barton Hill after she released that ball. Kind of surprised herself. Looks like the ball hits her hip before she's able to release it, and that's why it takes that weird skid off to the right. But this is something that Mercer can try to take advantage of, being able to get the lead off batter on base. Brings in now Shayla Warren. And it's one of those things too that you try to use anything against Kelly to garner momentum. Maybe a hit by pitch for Mercer can get it started. I mean, anytime you face Barnhill, you know you're gonna have a lot of strikeouts. So it's just about being persistent and making sure that you can take advantage of when you do get runners on base, whether it's a hit by pitch, whether it's a walk. But making the most out of your opportunities is what you need to do because there's not very many. 0-2. Oh, Popped up towards foul ground and this will land for a foul ball. We mentioned coming in Mercer, they're near the upper third in most offensive categories in the SOCON. They're second in batting average. They're first in hits. Four of the top five in terms of hit totals in the SOCON are on this Mercer team, including the top two hitters in the conference. Heavy swing and a miss. Warren down on strikes, and for Kelly, now six strikeouts. See Barnell able to get the strikeout just using her screwball. Now, now that's a pitch that she's able to blow by Warren, but ideally she wants that pitch to be located just a little bit better. That was a little bit too sweet over the plate. Brings in Tori Ash. And on the flip side of all those positive offensive numbers, Mercer does come in with the most strikeouts in the SoCon. They entered play with 180. That was 19 more than the next worst in Samford. Hey, you kind of always know that if you swing big, that you're going to have your strikeout numbers that go up with it. Almost, you know, two facts that are hand in hand. And Ash goes down on strikes. Again, Kelly in absolute command with seven strikeouts. not seen a ton of swings that have been close to this point for Mercer. You know, even with this pitch, this pitch was way out of the zone and Tori Ash was swinging early. I don't really think she even had a good idea of where that pitch was going to go. And that just shows how much decisive spin that Barnhill has right now. Now the Bears hope to get something started with the top of their order and Michaela Root after getting a leadoff hit by pitch from Amanda Schwartz. For Mercer, they're coming off a 6-0 win in the midweek against Georgia State. It was their third shutout win of the year. They won that game 6-0. Played a pair of ranked opponents this year. Lost to both Indiana and Auburn. Check swing past Hoover. Of the 21 strikes thrown by Barnhill, there's been nine swings and misses for Mercer batters.
Kelly at 12 Ks on Wednesday, looking for number eight. Kelly also this year in terms of performances with at least 10 strikeouts. She has already six this year and 45 in her career. Now right now, Michaela Root is putting together one of the best at-bats that we've seen from the Bears, being able to fight and continue to fight that the, ball, the balls that are in the zone and still laying off that rise ball. This will be the seventh pitch of the at-bat. She's really the only batter that's allowing the ball to travel deep enough to where she can decide if it's a ball to swing at or then to continue to fight it and get her barrel out. She had one foul ball that just went foul from the third baseman, Hoover, that, that, that could, if that was fair, that would have been a, an amazing slap hit. Again, gets a piece. Kayla Rood was the freshman of the year in the SOCON last year. That was the first Mercer Bear to accomplish that feat in program history. has been the prototypical leadoff hitter for this Bears team. First in the conference in runs scored. Second in stolen bases. That's flair towards Reynoso. Not a strikeout, but Barnhill will take it. As for the Bears, they get their first base runner in the inning. We're mid three here in sunny Gainesville. Florida leads by three. Gators lead by three runs as we head to the bottom of the third inning. The Gators two, three, and four due to the plate. Some have some firefighters out there over that right field fence. Is that Gangnam style? What kind of dance is that? Yeah. Good, you yep, know? Is that's it Gangnam the, style? Yeah, I don't know how to pronounce it, but I think you're right. Gangman style? Gangnam. Gangnam? Gangnam, yeah. Gangum. I, I think that's what it is. I think I heard it too. Kind of got stuck in my head. I believe Gangnam style came out in 2015. I'm probably way off on that. I can never keep track of like when those style dancing things come out. Yeah, they come and go. Meanwhile, Hannah Adams will lead it off against Bailey Pattison, who was hit around a bit in that second inning. Gators had two extra base hits in that three-run second. And you said it, hitting is contagious, and you hope for the middle near the lower third of that order that maybe it jump starts things, what we saw in that second inning. You can see Adams already making an adjustment going with looking like she's going to put a bunt down, but really just a timing mechanism, let the ball travel deeper. Pattison doesn't necessarily throw the ball relatively hard. She's somewhere between 64, 65. So being able to show your barrel out early and bring it back is just a timing mechanism so you can try to get on time. Is that something that you utilize when you played at all? Unfortunately, not me. I had just too big of a swing <laughs> to ever try to do something like shorten up like that. Um, but a lot of my teammates would. I would choke up. That would be my, my adjustment. As Adams draws a free pass for the Gators, a leadoff base runner. And for Pattison, her second walk issued brings in Amanda Lorenz, who walked in the first inning. By the way, we got confirmation on Gangnam Style. Came out in July of 2012, so I was only three years off. Oh yeah, 2012. It was close. Yeah. I wonder what the big dance move in 2015 then was. I have to go back and Google that. <laughs> Use the Google machine on that. Meanwhile, here's Lorenz, again, drifting back to the third spot in the order, has reached now in 29 of 32 games this year. She has not reached in only 10 games in her Gator career. 
This is her 225th career game. That's absurd. <laughs> it, it really is. I, I think my favorite thing about Amanda, I mean, there's so many favorite things I have about Amanda, but she's become such a great, iconic hitter in NCAA softball that people say something like, well, I mean, no one here is Amanda Lorenz. No one, here, no one here can be Amanda Lorenz, meaning that no one ever can be as good as this player right here. You have to say right now, easily top three most feared hitters in the game, if not the top in terms of just you, you don't want to pitch to her, you can't make a mistake to her. I completely agree. I don't think there'd be very many people who can argue that because when she's not getting walked, she's getting, you know, the game-winning home run, the game-winning double. Lorenz rips this into right center field. Adams goes first to third and getting the initial green light, but that turns quickly to red and for Lorenz, picks up a single. Now for Patterson, she's cornered, still nobody out in the third. Just a hard hit ball that Lorenz was able to put in play. She barrels this up, able to find a hole right down the middle, keeps her hands back on that changeup and able to just crush it. But you got to give credit to the center fielder, Allie Jones, for cutting this ball off in the gap. If she does not get a hold of that ball and take that deep angle, you have Hannah Adams scoring easily from first base. And now it presents a nightmare scenario early for Bailey Patterson because you have one of the hottest hitters in the country right now, and Kendall Lindemann stepping to the plate. And runners at the corner, still nobody out. We are seeing some action in that Mercer bullpen. Another freshman in Lynn Gardner. See how much longer Patterson could have. You see Gardner warming up. Lindemann flew out to center in her first at bat. And you wonder what that feeling was for Lindemann on Wednesday when the first inning against her old teammate, Amber Pfizer, one of the better right-handers in the country, was able to go yard in the first inning. Of course, she left there on good terms, came here to Florida for the aspirations of, of winning a national championship, but it certainly had to feel good going yard against your old team. And it's not something you think about. It's not something that you want to go, oh, I hope I hit a home run. You just think, oh, I hope I play well against them. This is drilled in the air towards left center field with carry towards the wall. It's gone. Bangs off the scoreboard for Kendall Lindemann, who is now homeward in five of the last seven games. And for Lindemann, her seventh long ball of the year, the Gators have a 6-0 lead. You know, there is not a hitter in the Gators lineup that is hot as Lindemann right now, and she is red hot. It almost looks like she kind of gets jammed on this pitch, not even fully extended, but able to lift this ball completely out of here. Easily clearing that wall near the World Series years and bangs off the scoreboard. So Lindemann now homering in five of the last seven games. Brings in Roberts, who homered in that second inning. And maybe this is a weekend that the Gators need, just a chance to take a deep breath outside of conference and get that confidence back. You know, I have to guess that's exactly that's exactly what they're trying to achieve for this goal this weekend. And, and I'm sure Coach Tim Walton was was looking forward to that. Is like, hey, you know, we're playing against a team to where we can maybe try to get more comfortable with success to help our confidence grow. Now for the Gators, 19 of their 30 total home runs this year have come against unranked teams. They've hit 11 against top 25 competition this year. And if you remember, including that West Coast trip, this was a Gator group that was struggling to find that power. They had a seven game stretch in which they had not hit a home run. And it's become a part of the identity of this offense. You know, some teams open up season just, you know, 
running out the gates, showing off everything that they have, but sometimes it takes other teams the entire season to build up to who they're going to be and figure out what kind of team they are. Heavy swing and a miss from Roberts, who's looking for home run number two on the afternoon. But for Patterson, picks up a big strikeout. That's her first of the afternoon. Now there's one gone for Danielle Romanello. And a strikeout that was definitely needed for Patterson's confidence, being able to get it off of her rise ball, trying to mix in some play that her counterpart Barnhill has. Brings in now Danielle Romanello. By the way, I found out what the dancing craze was in 2015. We can go year by year if you'd like. <laughs> what was it? It was the dab. I didn't think oh, the dab was that wow. old. I didn't think so either. Well, maybe that just proves that we are old. Yeah, yeah. that's true. That's a little hurtful, but yes. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Being that you are the youngest person in this booth right now, I'm sure you feel really bad about that. Also, the hit the quan. That I didn't know that was a thing, but apparently... That was on the headline of the Rolling Stone article I just looked at. I don't even know what that we'll, is. We'll YouTube that. <laughs> and we'll make you perform it. That's right. We can do that on camera. <laughs> do it tomorrow. Start the broadcast. There you go. That's the open. Better tune in. Here's Romanello hitting 219 on the year. Romanella was 0 for 3 on Wednesday and a pair of strikeouts. Braver last 26 at the plate. Cranks this down the right field line, but well foul. Fans enjoying the berm seating out right. Some fans utilizing the chair back seating underneath the shade structure, but like we said before, you don't really need it today. It's It feels nice out. It's not too hot. This is lined out towards left center field, dropping fast, take a couple hops and go up against the wall. Danielle Romanello's into second with a double. Romanello's third two bagger of the year, and the Gator is trying to keep this third inning rolling here with one out. You know, we talked about this game being able to boost the confidence for Florida, being able to boost confidence in certain pitches. This is a changeup that is not Romanella's bread and butter pitch, a pitch that she struggles off of, but being able to recognize it, keep her hands back, and crush it into that gap is crucial for her. So now Alex Voss comes in to pinch run at second base. And now we'll have a new pitcher, Lynn Gardner, will come in, so that will do it for Bailey Pattison. Runner at second, still her responsibility, but for Pattison, a rough outing. And for the Gators right now, the offense is rolling. They have a 6-0 lead. We'll come on back, tell you all about the new pitcher on the other side. Welcome back to Gainesville. As Sophia Reynoso stands in against the new pitcher and Lynn Gardner. So six for six, or rather six and six with a four eight six ERA. This is her nineteenth appearance on the year. Bailey Pattison yanked after only two and a third innings. You know, the biggest difference that you're going to see from Gardner in the circle is that she is throwing from the left side, so she's going to have a little bit more zip on it, a little bit more spin predominantly loves to throw her curveball in into righties away from lefties. Reynoso lifts this out towards right field. Charging in to make the grab is Michaela Rude. There's quickly two out, so Gardner comes in, gets Reynoso to fly out, and now there's two gone. So for the Gators in this game, they've been able to manufacture three extra base hits including two home runs. And here is Jamie Hoover, who had the second of those three extra base hits, a run scoring triple. Has the team lead in triples this year. It's gotta be fun to hit a triple. Something yeah. you know, I I've never done, but <laughs> I, I was always envious of those, those athletes who could hit triples and just leg it out. But, you know, anytime I would say that to uh, my teammates who would hit off triples often, they would say they'd much rather hit a home run because they don't have to run as fast. They get winded easily. 
and you hit a ton of home runs in your Gator career. I think you'd take that instead. Uh, I mean, I just get to trot, I guess. Yeah. But, <laughs> but still, I, I don't think there's no better feeling than being able to hit a ball hard and run out of the box and then dive into a base and get dirty. Hooper back up the middle into center field. Voss with speed around third. The throw comes in on one hop towards home plate. Voss will score. And for Jamie Hoover, a run scoring single. Gators now have a 7 0 lead. And for Hoover, now two runs driven in today. And she's another Gator batter that, you know, you look in the lineup, look for some more production, and she's getting that right now. Being able to take a pitch that's just down the middle and shoot it right back at her. That's just stationary to stationary softball there. Now brings in Cheyenne Lindsay. Gators trying to get that eight run differential. They have that at least an eight run lead through five innings. Gonna have a run rule victory. Bounce back towards Gardner, easy play towards first, and that ends what was a nightmare inning for Mercer. But for the Gators, in that inning, they tack on four more runs. A three-run home run from Kendall Lindemann continues to showcase the power. He's now homeward in five of the last seven games. The Minnesota transfer, the power swing on display. Gators lead 7-0. We now move to the top of the fourth inning. Gators a 7-0 lead. Seven runs on seven hits. Three-run home run of the prior inning from Kendall Lindemann. Now for the Gators, Kelly Barnhill out. Natalie Lugo is in with a big cushion. So Lugo a chance, Francesca, to maybe try and build some confidence after a rough outing in game two against LSU. I was just going to say, you know, we've been talking so much about the offense building their confidence, but this is a big, big reason why that you see Lugo in the circle. She kind of got beat up when she played against LSU. And so she's someone that needs to start feeling her pitches a little bit better. You know, her biggest issue is she's been locating the ball over the middle of the plate with her changeup. They've just been too sweet giving up those home runs. So trying to work through some live at-bats right now is going to be key for her. And there's obviously that big adjustment that has to take place from early in the year in the non-conference. And then once you enter SEC play, it certainly takes a big jump. It's Rodriguez goes down on strikes. So for Lugo, first batter face picks up a strikeout for Gator pitching. That is number eight on the day. And that's something that Lugo hasn't been used to is that she she loves that change up that is her bread and butter pitch but it's been getting hit because she hasn't been able to locate it and then that last pitch with that strikeout she gets the strikeout with her change up when she when she's able to get it to fall off the table meaning that that last minute drop off that is when Lugo's at her best Meanwhile, some defensive changes in the outfield. Caraway in left. Voss, who we saw pinch running in the prior inning, is in center. Cheyenne Lindsay moves over to right field. The infield remains the same for Coach Walt. We've seen some really good performances this year from Natalie Lugo. They came out west. She had a 13 strikeout performance against New Mexico on February 28th. Was roughed up a little bit in UCLA in that game two. They played two against the Bruins out there. You know, I feel like that trip out west for the Gators was a, was a changing point in itself because they, they didn't really go in there dominating, and they kind of came back with that same feeling of not, not exceeding the expectations as they thought they would. Castleberry swings at a pitch in the dirt. Lindemann has the angle, fires to first. For out number two, so Lugo, back-to-back -back batters faced, back-to-back -back Ks, two gone. And again, Lugo at her best when she uses that changeup in the dirt. Counterpart Lindemann there being able to pick her teammate up, keep the ball in play, or excuse me, keep the ball in front of her to get the throw the first. Here's Allie Jones. Who's the only, rather, one of two batters to have hit the ball in play. There's only been two outs that have not been via a strikeout. 
Allie Jones flared out to Reynoso at short. Both of the defensive putouts today have been from the Gators shortstop, Sophia Reynoso. Also, you see there, Francesca, we mentioned the shadows starting to creep, and certainly the shadows change now with the renovated ballpark, the elevated press box. They come into play a little bit earlier. Allie Jones flails and misses for strike three as Lugo strikes out the side. So Lugo comes in and fairly dominant. We're mid four. Gators lead 7 0. Gators in firm command with a 7 0 lead as we head to the bottom of the fourth inning. Gators, of course, is a bye week in terms of conference play. This is the first of two that these two teams will play this weekend, but Things certainly ramping up around the SEC. A lot of early storylines around the conference. One of the biggest ones, Alabama off to a 32-0 start. They're 4-0 in the league. Kentucky was off to a 6-0 start in SEC play. They lost two of three against Missouri. So it's one of those conferences, right? Any team could beat any other team on any given weekend. Here's Jade Carraway seeing her first start in the leadoff spot today. And kind of going back to the SEC play, I, you know, I love that Alabama's undefeated. I love seeing Alabama kind of rise up. We haven't seen that program be, be how dominant as they can be in the last few years, but they kind of have all the tools right now. Caraway bounces this back up the middle. Good play by the shortstop, Harvey, but no throw as Caraway is fairly quick down that line as an infield hit. Caraway just being that spark plug in the top of the lineup, exactly what the Gators are looking for. That's why they put her in there. Able to make the adjustment from her last at bat with the chopper to shortstop Harvey, but this time getting it over the pitcher's head. I guess she likes the face mask when yeah. she runs the bases. I noticed that too, <laughs> Francesca, is all the hitters now have that front guard yeah. on the helmet. I think that's the first time we've seen that this year. You've seen it more in the major leagues now. You know, I actually I meant to bring that up to you because it's it caught me off guard. Normally all yeah. batters have uh, face masks on, uh, but, it, but it is optional in college play. But in the youth level, it's mandatory. So since, you know, you're used to it, so when you get to college, you kind of play with it. So it is the first day we've seen that one through nine in the order. Meanwhile, Adams has laid down six sacrifice bunts this year. Had six bunts for singles. Lays one down here, but this twist foul. Meanwhile, we mentioned SEC play. The Gators will head back in SEC play next weekend. They'll play Friday through Sunday series at Ole Miss, and those road series are, are never easy. So LSU come back at a victory at Georgia today. They were down early in that game. LSU off to a good start. Almost Ole Miss. That's a, that's a tough team to play. You know, I, you know, I don't think they're ranked this year, but you know, they just hosted ranked team Oklahoma State and beat them two times. And it depends on which poll you look at, but on the ESPN poll, Ole Miss has just creeped into the top 25 recently. They're 23rd in the country. Nine teams in the SEC are ranked in the top 25. It's tough to play in the SEC. Right now, Alabama has a 10-1 lead on Texas A&M. That in the fifth inning. Their offense is on a whole different level right now in Tuscaloosa. You know, one of the one of the coolest things about Alabama's lineup right now is that they don't necessarily have like one big star. You you have Bar Bailey Hemphill that's been able to get a lot of their big home runs for them, but but they're a team that's working well because they know each other's roles and they know who needs to come up, who needs to step up when. So so they're a, a kind of a complete team. Adams reaching for this one towards Lane at first, steps on the bag, but moves the runner over. 
So Gardner gets the first out of the inning, brings in now Amanda Lorenz. You know, and a hit like that almost works the same as a sacrifice. You're able to move the runner to second base while sacrificing yourself out. So Hannah Adams being able to get her job done. Here's Lorenz who has walked and singled. Lays his team in almost every single offensive category coming into today. Recently, Lindemann has taken the top spot in terms of team RBI. And entering this game, Lorenz was only one of her last 11 at the plate, but there's a different way of looking at that. During that stretch, she also manufactured eight walks. And she's not getting a ton to hit, too. No, Lorenz does not get very many mistakes to hit. So when she does get those hits, you know that those are on pitcher's pitches. That one sails all the way to the backstop. So Caraway is set up now with third on the wild pitch. Four pitch walk to Amanda Lorenz. Now runners at the corners for Kendall Lindemann. Last time up, drilled a three run home run. Now has homered in five of the last seven games and that has been an issue for this Mercer staff this year. To go back to that home run in the third inning. Now just a pitch that's left over the middle of the plate. Kendallman turning on it. And I say this often, she doesn't have a big powerful swing. She's super simple, but because the simplicity in it, she's able to gain power with her hips. Mentioned this Mercer staff between Pattison and Gardner coming in, they've relented 33 home runs. They've now given up 44 total home runs as a staff. Well, it's tough as you have two of your, your go-to pitchers are freshmen. And you can ask any freshman pitcher whether, you know, they play for Mercer or they play for the, in the SEC, you kind of get knocked around your freshman year because you learn that you cannot make mistakes, that you have to make sure that you're placing the ball absolutely perfectly. Lindemann drives this deep towards left field, all the way towards the Gator bullpen. She's over it again. Kendall Lindemann, the power stroke on display. And the Gators continue to pad their lead. Two home runs on the day for Lindemann. Now the Gators have a 10-run lead. Lindemann just feeling so good right now. I bet you she's been keeping with the same routine every single morning to make sure that she's been hitting these home runs. That one an absolute no-doubter. And again, just such a simple swing. Nothing really changes in her, her swings from her singles, from the swing to her home run. She's just able to get more of her bottom half to lift it. Now eight home runs this year for Kendall Lindemann. And you know it, Francesca, as a power hitter. Is there any better feeling when you're this locked in right now, the way Lindemann must be feeling? I like literally just said in my head, <laughs> there's no better feeling than that right there. <laughs> when the ball just looks like a beach ball, it, it's just, it's something that you always hope to strive for, that you always want to make sure that you can feel this good. You know, not, not only being able to turn on inside pitches, but go with outside pitches, be able to lift things out. And like again, her her power it just it just comes so easily for her. Now has 48 career home runs. She had 20 in her first two years at Minnesota. Roberts is also homer today. Got the Gators on the board in the second inning. And Lindemann in both of her home runs coming up with first and third. Oh, wow. 
3-2, well off the plate. Roberts draws a walk on base for the second time today. As the Gators continue to try to pad their lead as Alex Voss, who was on defense and had pinch ran in the prior inning, now will hit the sixth spot for Danielle Romanello. See Gardner learning what happens if you keep a ball over the middle of the plate with giving up that home run to Lindemann. Tries to be extra careful against Roberts, but a little bit too careful, gives up that easy walk. Lily Mann comes in to pinch run over at first for Jordan Roberts. Now for Mercer pitching, they've issued four walks in this game. Meanwhile, for Alex Voss, she's trying to get the bat going. Two of her last 27 at the plate. Also looming on deck is Jordan Matthews with pinch hit for Reynoso in the seventh spot. Boss bounces this towards second base. No play at second, no play at all. Boss with the speed, now first and second with one out. Castleberry just got caught in between. We haven't been able to see any of the Gator slappers really get that type of significant hang time, but Voss able to get it here, and you see this hop right at that moment. Second baseman Castleberry has no play. She can either try to attack it, but Voss would still easily been safe. Last time these two teams played was in 2015. They played in a doubleheader. The Gators scored a combined 30 runs in that doubleheader, including a 20-3 win in the first game of two. Gators are 6-0 all time against Mercer. And while here's Jordan Matthews, in that 20-3 win, Brianna Little set a program record for home runs in a single game, runs driven in in a single game. She had three homers and nine RBI in that 20-3 win. The 9 RBI remains a school record. Taylor Fuller, less than a month later, would hit three home runs in that season against LSU. I know that, that's a good day, right? <laughs> <laughs> that is one you don't forget. That's when you kind of leave the ballpark earn, earning your meal, you know? Feeling like you really yeah. deserve that food that you got. Meanwhile, here's Matthews, and we've seen what Jordan Matthews was able to do in her freshman year, was part of the SEC All-Freshman team. Has hit a bit of a tough stretch at the plate of late. But she certainly can be an X factor for this lineup. We saw her in the LSU series. See all the starts at third base. Something that she's trying to become more comfortable with. Something that she played at, in travel ball. But Coach Walton trying to find ways to get her in the lineup and be productive. I mean, that's the biggest thing, you know, trying to pull out her product productivity. She has the potential. That's why Coach Tim Walton continues to try to find a place for her because of the potential but she hasn't been able to be consistent with it. There you see the shadows continuing now to creep out beyond home plate. Matthews flies this towards left field as Warren is in to make the grab. Now there's two outs while the runners retreat. Brings in now Jamie Hoover. You see the raised press box. Lynn Gardner in relief of Bailey Pattison. Her final line only finished up two and a third innings. Allowed six hits, seven runs, all of those earned two walks to one strikeout. Go, 
Hoover bounces this towards third. And stepping on the bag is Amanda Schwartz, and that ends the inning. So for the Gators, they get Lindemann once again to go yard. Her second home run of the day as six runs driven in. The Gators have a 10-0 lead. Last chance for Mercer, trying to make this a reasonable deficit. Gators looking for the run rule victory. As for the Gators, they will send now Danny Farley, the freshman, inside the circle. What a day it's been for Kendall Lindemann. That's kind of been the story of late, and she's homer twice. With now six runs driven in for the Gators. And Farley having a lot of fun along with this Gators team, and Farley trying to get a good inning here of work and getting some confidence back as well. Yeah, Lindemann just proving that how smart we are on the open, just yeah. talking about her offensive power, being able to pick it up and really catching on fire. And she continues to do that today with those two big home runs. I have a feeling she might be a part of the open tomorrow after the outstanding performance. Meanwhile, nothing today for Mercer as they've only amassed one base runner. Came on a hit by pitch to lead off the third inning. That's the third pitcher for the Gators today as Barnhill got the start, went a perfect three innings along with seven strikeouts. Lugo struck out the side in her lone inning in the fourth. Meanwhile, defensive change, Hannah Sipos now at third base for Jamie Hoover. Kenley Harvey, Megan Lane and Amanda Schwartz all do up in this inning. There's Sipos over at third, who made a sparkling diving catch in game three of that LSU series, was a Sports Center top 10 nominee. Last time we saw Farley inside the circle was game two against LSU in that run rule loss. Came in with the bases loaded, only faced one batter. Farley part of one of two freshmen in this rotation right now, fighting for some innings. The other, Elizabeth Hightower. You know, the potential that this bullpen has for Florida, you know, it, it's potent. It could be really, it could be really good because these pitchers are so different from one another. You have someone like Farley who throws the ball pretty firm with being able to use a curve and a backdoor curve. You have Hightower that has a lot of rise ball spin. And that's downstairs for ball four. So Farley, first batter faced, walks Kenley Harvey, only second base runner today for Mercer, comes here in the fifth. And then you have someone like Natalie Lugo who has that changeup, but but it's been the issue is trying to figure it all out together. How, who's going to kind of step up? Because when you see big swing and misses like that, it's because of that that curve and the curveball that Farley's throwing with the speed behind it. It's hard to catch up with it. seen Farley this year pitching some big games, pitched in relief against number two UCLA. They give up a three-run home run against last year's National Player of the Year, Rachel Garcia, in that appearance. This is grounded back up the middle, and the no-hitter is no more. Megan Lane with a single into right center. Right now, Mercer mounting a threat here with two on and nobody out. The Gators were in search of their eighth combined no-hitter in program history. And with one swing, Megan Lane has Mercer's first hit. Now here's Amanda Schwartz. Schwartz was Mercer's first base runner on a hit by pitch in the third inning. That was the awkward Kelly kind of spiked the softball in that moment. 
And hit her on a hop. This is bunted towards Farley. Boots it. Rolls towards the right side of the infield. This will bring in a run as Harvey will score. Moving down to third is Megan Lane. And now Schwartz is at first base, so no shutout here today. It's now a 10-1 game. Meanwhile, for the Gators, some changes. We mentioned Saipos at third. Matthews now at second base. And in the outfield, it's Caraway, Voss, and now Hoover and Wright. So that right side of the infield was vacated after it went past Farley, allowing a run to score. And that's because you had Matthews on the butt as she's supposed to go and cover first base, but Farley unable to keep this ball cleanly in front of her, just kind of bounces out to no man's land. See Hannah Adams, who's now playing short, going over to talk to Farley, just trying to calm her down. You know, things are happening pretty quickly to the freshman. That's right. You have Hannah Adams now over at shortstop. This one softly line towards left field. That's down for a hit. Megan Lane comes in to score. Run scoring single for Shayla Warren. That's her 16th run driven in this year. And now it's an eight run game. It's 10 to two. And we talk about how much good stuff Danny Farley has. She has that speed, but but her biggest issue is that she misses over the middle of the plate too much. And the Bears, who, you know, they've been facing Barnhill, they face Lugo, are starting to see the ball in the sweet spot and able to catch up to it. Bunt is laid down. Farley fields it this time over to first for the out. That moves a pair of runners into scoring position. You can see the game plan for the Mercer for Mercer Bears right now is that they're not trying to win the game this inning. They're trying to prolong it, putting that bunt down to get the runners in scoring position to make sure that this does not end up being a mercy rule. So nice bunt laid down by Tori Ash. Moves runners to second and third, and that will do it for Danny Farley. Gators need two more outs to try and nail down this run rule win, but Mercer trying to avoid that with two runners in scoring position as Katie Cronister will come in. So now a chance for Cronister to get some work in here with second and third. We saw her in the LSU series in game two. But for Mercer, playing with a little bit of confidence right now and something for them that they can smile about in this fifth inning, getting some offense and stringing something together. And it's big for them. They, they don't have to face Barnhill anymore. They're being able to see a bunch of different looks, but now they have to face Cronister coming from the left side. Cronister, the Gainesville native. Mentioned she pitched in that LSU series, also pitched twice out west against UCLA. Last year at a 3-9-4 ERA, only eight appearances last season, made four starts, was... Part of, at times, the, the midweek rotation for Coach Walton. And for her, it's about trying to get some of that confidence back. She did deal with an off-season injury that kind of delayed the, a lot of, the amount of work that she was able to put together in the off-season. There you see Barnhill in the dugout. She certainly had an outstanding start, a stellar three innings for the season. Yeah, being able to you know collect seven strikeouts today. And just doing classic Kelly Barnhill, being able to use her rise ball, you really use her screw and her two-seam fastball as well. So for Kelly, did not allow a hit through three innings, had seven strikeouts, 44 pitches. So the infield is creeping in for Michaela Rood. Again, what's on the line in this moment is Mercer is trying to eliminate what could be a run rule loss here in this fifth inning. This is bounced towards second. Matthews chases back the runner. The runner was caught between second and third. I don't think Lorenz saw. As Shayla Warren was caught about halfway off of second base, Gators had the opportunity at a possible double play. But Matthews being smart by looking the runner back he goes easily, but you can see that the second base was second the runner at second base was completely off. But uh, Lorenz not wanting to make the throw. So now Mercer down to their final out. Here's Brianna Rodriguez, bounce towards Matthews over to first, and that will do it. Gators get the run rule victory. Bats were out in a big way here today as the Gators knock off the Mercer Bears in the first of two in this weekend set.
by a final score of 10 to 2. It's just a complete game win for Florida, being able to get all of their pitchers, you know, except for Elizabeth Hightower, and get some some innings underneath them, get some experience. But really, the offense that is what was needed today, and every batter showed up for them. So one through nine, certainly a nice display offensively, led by Kendall Lindemann, who homered twice, had two three-run home runs, totaled six RBI. Part of the story for the Florida Gators, and an offensive surge, they knock off Mercer. 10 to 2. We'll have game two of this mini two game set tomorrow. First pitch for 1 p.m. Eastern time right here on the SEC Network Plus. So for our entire crew, Francesca Nea, I'm Kyle Crooks saying so long and good day here from Gainesville.